All right, everybody. We are going to go to the end of the business plan development section. We are going to learn a lot about the uh, executive summary right now, and you're going to store that in the back of your head so when we, you decide to draft it at the end, you'll be prepared, OK? Uh, let's start off with looking at our packet. It says executive summary right up right on the front. Everybody got one of these? We're going to go over this right up at the end of class, or at the end of this PowerPoint. I have five tips for creating a sticky uh, strategic vision in this packet. We're going to touch on that when we talk about your strategic visions, your mission statements, and your vision statement. And if we have time, I would like to do this activity at the end, but it looks like we actually will have time. So um, hopefully we can get to that. So you're familiar with all the pages, and then when I tell you to turn to it, you know where to turn. Also on the back, we have an example executive summary. I don't really like it all that much. It's kind of vague. But for the most part, it hits some of the points. Um, <coughs> use the executive summary in the templates that I gave you uh, really as a basis. Um, or when we go through this right up in the front, this is probably what you should use to draft your uh, executive summary, because it really breaks down every sing single section. OK. Going on. Here we go. What is an executive summary? Your one and only opportunity to build interest in your business plan. If you're giving your business plan to somebody who's not standing right in front of you and you can't sales pitch it, which is most of the time, most lenders will take your business plan and then talk about it in front of a board without you around. Um, and this is really your, your best opportunity to trigger an interest in your business. And that's the front page, cover page, right on front, breaks down everything about your business. It's your hook. It's your sales pitch. Sound salesy. Sound like you're going to try to interest somebody. If it sounds over the top, you're, you're on the right pace, okay? If it sounds like you're being like a used car dealer, you're on right pace. That's what it's for. It's to spark interest. It's to try to say whatever you can that will trigger somebody to continue turning the page of your business plan because nine times out of ten, they read that front page and they don't go on because it's their money and they don't think it's a good idea. Plain and simple. But they might think it's a good idea if you get the right details in there, especially the finances, and if you're going to make money. It is a single page that briefly describes every aspect of your business. I know that's a lot of stuff to go into one page, but we'll break it down. First, let's talk about vision statement, and then we'll talk about mission statement. Um, or do we want to do this? Let's see here. Let's do this first. I want you to look at this slide. This is actually near the end of the, the slides. I think it's, I have it's slide number 22 of 32. Um, all right. An executive sum summary outline essentially should have these parts to it. We're all on the right page? No. Executive summary outline. I hear a lot of flipping. We're still there? OK. You want to have the purpose of your business. Why? An explanation. Why are you starting your business? Or why are you revamping your business? Or how, how, why are you putting your business through transition? Purpose. It's to make a million dollars a year. That is a purpose. To make sure that I, you have enough money to sustain the land for the next few generations. That is your purpose. You're going to discuss exactly what products and services you offer. 
down to I want to sell chocolate covered macadamia nuts made with the highest quality chocolate, local chocolate available, and I want to sell them on, to the tourist market. Okay, that is your product. When you talk about your product, you want to talk about what your product is, who buys it, when do they buy it, where do they buy it, that kind of thing. You want to talk about your business structure, which we'll hit on in a second. Are you an LLC? Are you a, pri are you a sole proprietorship? Are you a corporation? Are you, do you not know what you are? <laughs> Hopefully you know what you are, so that you can explain it. What market research have you done, or what market research exists? So you're going to want to say, plain and simple, last year, Mac chocolate covered macadamia nut producers made this amount of money in Hawaii. And then they made this amount of money distri distribution, distributing to the mainland or internationally. You really want to have this data out there, but you don't want to put all your market research, just the stuff that really, really matters when making a decision for lending. Research and development, if any. What surveys have you done? What are people in the, in the market saying about your product? Marketing, your marketing plan. How do you plan on marketing? And also your sales activities. You're only going to sell online. Great way to start off a business. And then if you get, get enough capital, maybe you can start selling in another fashion. Um, what type of activities are you going to do to get the word of your product out to your customer and then also retain your customer? You're going to talk about your organization and personnel, your management team. Who are the people involved? And most importantly, definitely most importantly, your financial data. Not all of your financial data, but remember those things that I want to have included, the income statement, cash flow projection, what's the other one? What was the other one? Your financial section. Yes, your expenses. You have to worry about the money's going out. You can't always worry about the money's going in. So. Financial data, you want to at least hit on those three during that section, if not break even analysis as well, and a few other things that I'll touch on during financials. Okay? And those are real simple. I mean, it's just a sentence that says, by year five, we're going to make this amount of money. And it will have cost us this much money to make that much money, or whatever. It's real simple. Break it down in a few sentences and uh, all the important points in your finances. Okay? So let's go back up to the beginning where we were in the beginning. Sorry to confuse you. And we'll talk about the vision statement, which is when you're talking about the purpose of your business. Okay. I'll let you. I'll let you get settled. It's my fault. Sorry. Okay, what is a vision statement? Something you're certainly going to want to include in your um, executive summary. It outlines what the organization wants to be or how it wants the world in which it operates to be. An idolized view of the world. Okay, Is it a long-term view and concentrates on the future? It can be a f uh, emotive and is a source of inspiration. Does it cause emotion? Does your vision statement trigger some kind of an emotion? For example, a charity working with the poor might have a vision statement of which ends a world without poverty. Okay, it kind of sums up what they're trying to do or the way they want to envision the world. They want to envision a world without poverty. So they're going to do everything they can or at least everything within their power to prevent that or to to create this world without poverty. So every company has a vision statement. You could think of them, but I don't want you to get confused with slogans, OK? 
it really must describe the passion. Remember I said emotion? The passion behind the idea, okay? So let's look at Amazon's vision statement. Our vision is to be the Earth's most customer-centric company. Not saying anything about internet, not saying anything about their products, not saying this is their focus, it's that their focus is the customer before all else. To build a place where people can find and discover anything they might want to buy online. Notice they don't want to sell you anything. It's find and discover. That's your job to decide if you want to do it. Their job is to make every product available to you online. And with that, they will meet their vision statement because then will come customers. If you make every single, every single thing available to the, the customers, they will buy from you. Right? Vision statement. Great opportunity to give some life to your simple business idea. I'm going to skip the exercise, make sure we have time, we'll do that at the end, okay? Let's look at PepsiCo's. PepsiCo's responsibility is to continually improve all aspects of the world in which we operate. That's ballsy. Both environmental, social, and economic, creating a better tomorrow than today. Okay? That's the way they envision the world and the way they envision themselves in it. They are here not to make sugary, disease-infested drinks that will cause diabetes and your teeth to rot out. They're here specifically to improve the environment, social, and economic issues and creating a better tomorrow. Our vision is to put into action these programs and focus on environmental stewardship, like stealing water from people, which they do. Aquafina, anybody drinking Aquafina today? Steal their water from people. Um, <laughs> our vision is put action through programs a focus on environmental stewardship activities benefit society and a commitment to build a shareholder value by making PepsiCo a truly sustainable company. I knew it was going to be in there somewhere. <coughs> they had to put it in there because honestly, when it comes down to it, the focus of their company is to make money. And if they don't put that in the vision plan, then the people that want to invest in their company won't. Because those people, they don't give a crap about what you're trying to do for the environment. They just want to make money. So with this, they hit two nails, right? The social economic people and then the profit people, all in one vision statement. How beautiful is that? But after it's all said and done, do you disagree? They do do programs to help the environment at the same time robbing it under their own nose. But they do social programs. They send kids to college. They do economic programs. They bring inner city kids around and they do this. They, okay? They do this. Yes. And they also make money for their shareholders. Let's look at uh, LeapFrog. Everybody know what LeapFrog is? Children education? LeapFrog Enterprises is a leading developer in innovative technology based educational products. Leading developer, true. They come up with new ways to educate kids. They also come up with new ways to get kids addicted to screens. They do. That's kind of their focus. <laughs> um, <coughs> leading developer, innovative technology-based educational products. Yes, every single thing that they create is educational-based. And the content dedicated to making learning effective and engaging. Compared to what? I don't know. The classroom, maybe a little bit better. Getting a kid addicted to screens, I don't know if they're actually comprehending what 2 plus 2 is, because the computer tells them. But usually they are. It's a pretty good company. But I'm going to do my best to keep screens away from my kid. He's already going crazy for my iPad. 
He doesn't even know how to do it. All he d I turned it off, and he just touches it. It's off. And he'll sit there for 15 minutes touching it. <laughs> I swear, it's like sending out a signal to his brain. It's like, yeah. So there's the vision statement. A little bit more, a little bit nicer, right? Hey, there's a filthy farm girl fo fo best soap people. Homemade soap with an attitude, plain and simple. It's homemade, unnat uh, all natural ingredients, and uh, it's certainly got attitude to it. It's got a certain persona to their product if you look at their labels. That's their label. Huh? Their label. No, that's their emblem. If you go to the health food store or you go to any of the farmer's market, um, almost all health food stores have Filthy Farm Girl. Um, f f yeah, you can buy it on Craigslist too. It is, it is. What the guy does is he takes old um, uh, propaganda images from World War II and he dresses them up and makes them. Sometimes uh, the, the the photos that are on the front are a collage of like 20, 30 different images. The guy does a really good job with this cover. So uh, anyway, um, let's look at Exxon. Everybody likes Exxon, right? Exxon Mobil Corporation is committed to being the world's premier petroleum and petrochemical company. <coughs> Anybody disagree? They're trying. At that end, we must continuously, we must continuously achieve superior financial and operating results while adhering to the highest standards of business conduct. I didn't underline that. That's the way it is written on their website. Okay. In the end, meaning after all things are considered, all things are done, and all actions are taken. They consistently want to achieve superior financial and operating results at whatever cost. That's what it said. While adhering to the highest standards of business conduct, okay, environmental conduct, social economic, doesn't say anything about that, only about the bottom dollar in the business. These unwavering expectations provide the foundation for our commitments to those with whom we interact. Ooh, that sounds very exclusive, doesn't it? Kind of like only the shareholders. This is honest. It is written to try to sell people shares. Only people that are worried about the bottom dollar are really going to invest in ExxonMobil. People that are very worried about the environment, they don't invest in ExxonMobil. And they know that. They're only sales pitching the customers they want. And when it comes to corporations, the shareholders are the customers, not the people buying the gas. Just the shareholders. Those are the customers. They're the ones making the profit. OK? All right, we all know what a vision statement is. So what is a mission statement? It defines, in one to three sentences, the fundamental purpose of an organization or an enterprise. Secondly, describing why it exists and what it does to achieve its vision. For example, a charity might have a vision statement saying, Providing jobs for the homeless and unemployed. That is their mission statement. That's what they are here to do, is the purpose of their company. Not the way they see the world. That's the other one. Not the way they hope the world will see them. Nah. This is just what they try to do. This charity is just wants to provide jobs for the homeless and unemployed. Mission statement, describe the idea of why your business exists. Again, purpose. We just went over that. Why will customers buy your products and services? The, you got to ask yourself, when you're designing your mission statement, does this meet your wants and needs? Is what the customers, or, or why, why your business exists, does that reflect your needs? 
Some people, the business exists to make a ton of money. That's why your business exists. Some people, like the charity, their business exists to give jobs to the homeless and unemployed. Um, does that meet your needs? You gotta ask yourself that. Your needs are what the whole basis of the business, or the whole business is based on, okay? Not anyone else's. Sample mission statements. Let's look at FedEx Corporation. FedEx Corporation will produce superior financial returns for its shareholders by providing high value added logistics. Mission statement. Purpose. Why is FedEx around? It's a corporation. It's to make money. They state that. Don't get it confused with the vision, making money on the Exxon, uh, Exxon side, okay? Transportation and related information services through focusing on uh, focused operating companies. So they state in their mission statement they want to work with other companies, their customers. But they under with this, they're stating that they understand how companies work and that they are there to work with them because they understand how businesses run. Customer requirements will be met in the highest quality manner appropriate for each market segment served. FedEx Corporation will strive to develop mutually re rewarding relationships for its employees, partners, and suppliers. So, this is very true. Where FedEx exists, they are great to their, com their employees. Benefits, retirement plan, this company will not shrink your 401k halfway through your pension because they were built by the man who started this was a mail clerk, okay? He st had the idea, he brought it up. So he understands that it, the company is, is focused on its employees as well, as much as it is for your shareholders. Don't forget that most employees are shareholders. Safety will be the highest consideration for all operations, both for the products being shipped, the airplanes that they own going up, Everything. So safety is, a, is certainly a concern for them. Have you heard about, besides the movie Castaway, a FedEx plane going down? FedEx planes? They don't. They haven't. They've never had a plane crash as long as they've been in existence in 65. So safety is in their mission statement. Uh, cor corporate activities will be conducted to the highest ethical and professional standards. You'd hope so. Sample mission statements, you can do it in bullet points, kind of how UPS does it. Grow our global business by serving logistics needs for customers, offering ex excellence and value in all that we do. Okay. We started the first one off with shareholders. These guys are starting off with customers and offering excellence and value. So it seems to me that you're offering excellence, which is better than US Postal Service, right? A, a service that's better than the standard, and you're uh, giving a value to it. It has a value to it. Now, how, what does UPS cost versus FedEx? Almost the same. Now it is. It was a couple years ago. UPS was much cheaper than FedEx. FedEx was much more expensive. Why? Because they guarantee delivery. UPS does not guarantee delivery. FedEx will pay you back for your shipping costs and whatever logistic problems that them not being able to get the package there caused. Okay? That's why you pay top dollar for FedEx. Now they're a little bit different. Because of computers, because of the internet, these guys are able to compete and FedEx has had to drop their prices. Uh, la, 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 la. Maintain a financially strong company with broad employee ownership that provides a long-term competitive return for share to our shareholders. UPS offers very limited stocks out that are not employee owned. They like to keep their stocks in-house. Right? And that re is reflected right there. So their shareholders right here are the same people for the most part. Inspire our people and business partners to do their best, offering opportunities for personal development and success. 
and lead by example as a responsible, caring, and sustainable company making a difference in communities we serve. UPS uses hybrid trucks. They use natural gas trucks. Um, they are taking an environmental stewardship role in their shipping. They're trying to distinguish themselves from everybody else. They know that FedEx doesn't really have that program, so they decide to incorporate that into their mission statement. Because for a guy who might be environmentally conscious versus profit conscious, this might be the better route for me. Okay. Something about UPS. Yes, go ahead while I do this. Um, I work part time at Sears, mm -hmm. and the delivery guy has been with them for a long time. And he said, UPS went to a study that if you look all the UPS trucks, they all go right. <laughs> if you check look, they all go right because it's more uh, uh, fuel efficient to go right instead of going left. If you check look at a lot of places where they do business. All right. They go from our store to go right around to the other store in the, the mall. And I mean, start noticing they always go right. Like, rarely do they go left, but they will save money. Mm -hmm. Million dollars, like a millions of dollars they save. And, but they will spend that money for the research to do that. Just you know, for the, for the driver. And he makes big money. I got uh, this company, a couple guys I know in California started up this company and um, just on the internet and they're actually making a pretty decent amount of money and I want to show you, I don't know if you can hear, I don't have any, ju I just have my speakers here so kind of be quiet, but it's the mission statement for Ugly, sw ugly Sweaters. MyUglySweaters.com, the place where dreams and chafing are both made. So, they want to become filthy famous, like not just Elvis famous, dinosaur famous. And they want to provide the highest quality products and the ugliest sweaters available. Plain and simple, that is their mission. Okay? They're actually, <laughs> there's three guys out there. Last year they pulled in over $100,000 in internet sales. So, it's there. <laughs> 